So my name is Saverio Romeo. I'm not from this community. And uh, uh, you know, the, I, I, I'm from the IoT community. Uh, and uh, you know, AR, VR always come around me uh, in, uh, in IoT applications. Um, I've done quite a few work around the convergence IoT and AR, VR particularly AR, I have to say. Um, I did a work from the Augmented Reality Enterprise Alliance on, on the convergence of IoT with AR. Here, I'm not, really, I'm not really talking about AR, but I want to give you, uh, I want to give this community a couple of messages that are coming out from a piece of research we are doing between Italy and the UK. Uh, on, the, um, on how COVID-19 has changed uh, the discussion on digital transformation and which are the, which is the role or the perceived role, if you want. And then uh, yeah, I'm happy to have your view that you are, you probably come from this world uh, on, on what I'm going to say, maybe a bit provoking, uh, but I hope you can get the message and, um, you know, and, and um, maybe spread the message around uh, your domain. I mean, I'm using the term immersive realities because it was a term used in a paper published by um, Industrial Internet Consortium. Uh, the Industrial Internet Consortium is um, a body of research and application and kind of work around standards um, about industrial internet industry 4.0. And they look at, uh, at least during 2018, uh, at the role of uh, AR, VR, XR, uh, MR, sorry, <clears throat> into uh, industrial IoT applications. I'm coming from uh, a mixed background in a sense that I work in a research center, University in London of Burbank. Uh, this research center looks at the impact of um, uh, emerging digital technologies. Uh, look at from an, an innovation policy uh, management angle. Uh, so uh, I'm here in this session, business and marketing, but the, you know, the academic angle here is really on, uh, uh, on innovation technology boards. Um, I'm also, I, I'm not an academic, I'm only academic in this group. I'm the link between this group of academics and the external world. And I then run a number of, um, consulting activities around the IoT and the application of the IoT. Uh, now, um, if uh, my slide move, yeah. <clears throat> so what, I was, what we have done, okay, Shanti, uh, what would the research is based on? The research is um, a, a designed around uh, the concept of digital transformation. Uh, from an academic point of view, but you know, you will see that my approach is very industry-led, um, and we have um, interviewed and we have run surveys in two locations, in Italy and in the UK, uh, in order to understand the evolution of the digital transformation along this uh, period of life we are having, uh, and. Uh, um, within the, this digital transformation and the technologies involved. Uh, here, I'm going to give you some ideas on the, uh, on the role of uh, ARPR. Um, so the agenda is really a journey, this presentation. We had the pre-COVID phase, and I will discuss how excited everyone was about digital transformation. <clears throat> uh, and then we went on the first phase of lockdown, and uh, really, um, digital transformation paradigm was under stress. We, we certain areas of the digital transformation uh, highlighted in the previous phase were really under stress with COVID and the first uh, lockdown phase. And then we looked uh, at what um, could be uh, the recovery way out of COVID. Certainly at the moment, we are going back to the red box in the middle, this is the sense, but uh, we go back to the red box uh, with some experience uh, on, uh, on, uh, on how to use digital technologies around this phase. Um, so this is a definition for digital transformation. 
uh, quite well known in the, in the information system academics, information system management is from BL. You know, the digital transformation is basically seen it as a, a, a disruption uh, within the organization, not only due just to technology itself, but by a number of things around technology that should uh, basically prompt strategic changes. These strategic changes are in business model, in organizational models, and so on, which should in, in turn uh, drive innovation in terms of positive incomes. And when I use the term innovation here, I'm, too, I'm using it in a Schumpeterian way. You know, innovation growth as a, somehow also a, a drive of, uh, of uh, revenue growth. Now, um, well, was before COVID, yeah? Before COVID, really, the debate and the discussion around digital transformation was around the Internet of Things as a basic, if you want, as a, a building block. Uh, and obviously, here yeah, I'm talking about you know, digital cutting edge technologies, kind of um, assuming a bit that e-commerce is already not a cutting edge anymore. Uh, type of technology. There are other elements in the e-commerce that can be defined cutting edge, but I'm looking at the higher T and everything comes uh, together with the higher T. Uh, this is a, a uh, the one you see in the slide is a study from Microsoft IoT Signals, which they interviewed 3,233 company decision makers in which they ask for the impact that the higher T is having. And you can see there on the slides without me telling you that the impact is very positive. And this positive impact can be seen also on how the revenues around IoT work, uh, is growing and is predicted to grow, uh, in, in, in at least until 2025. Um, and I have to say, in this case, COVID does not change that much. Actually, the IoT community is quite uh, strongly tuned uh, around this growth because there are a number of technology that is pushing starting from, uh, uh, from 5G. There are problems here yeah, in the IoT in all this point in this vision. There are technological problems and non-technological problems. Uh, I would say on the technological side, there is uh, the, the security aspect, the scalability aspect. You know, we, we, are, we are imagining uh, large deployments of uh, uh, connected devices, not always they work when we scale towards the million. Uh, the interoperability between different types of technologies. <clears throat> From a non-technological point of view, uh, there are all a number of issues and skills, which involve here, start to involve the AR, VR community in terms of uh, training systems for, uh, for new skills, for example. There is a big question about human machine interaction, and this is your world. You know, uh, how, to what extent, in a, for example, in a, a manufacturing plant, uh, we can um, create uh, collaborative manners between machine and humans, and what the humans needs to do. Uh, the use of uh, AR VR system for workflow management is a, a, a relevant. Um, topic uh, in, the, in the industrial IoT. Uh, and then, you know, the prediction automation of all the systems. But it's not just from a technical point of view, what that means from all the organization of labor. So there are all these, these problems. Uh, pro there are challenges, yeah? And one way of dealing with that uh, before COVID was on one side to try to simplify the IoT uh, the IoT deployment, yeah. Um, how, uh, particularly the software development uh, side on the uh, connectivity problems, interoperability of different hardware. So there was a lot of activity around that. On the other side, there was okay. The really aim of the IoT uh, and within the digital transformation is to go towards predictive and automated environment. And the IoT cannot do it on its own because IoT is primarily about sensing data, sensing spaces, gathering data, uh, exchange the data maybe to these devices, and then bring the data up to do some analysis. To do the analysis and to do the, the, all the predictive automation, we need other technologies. And therefore, before COVID, 
we were really in this new convergence era. Yeah, we were technology frameworks coming together uh, in order to respond to the challenges and uh, um, the challenges that I, I, I listed before. And there was a strong presence in this convergence from an IoT point of view of AR. Now, I have to say that um, uh, this, despite this, these two worlds they did not really talk much together. So the, the IoT AI world and the AR, uh, AR augmented reality world, there was really misperceptions in my opinion. Uh, in a sense that from one side, AR was sometimes seen as, a, you know, this is a gaming platform, terrible perception of AR. Uh, but was, you know, in interviews, in discussion, you have the sense that um, cannot really be for us. Um, there was, a, anyway, there was a sort of, um, uh, um, how can I say, block of organization, block of people who had a completely different view on AR, in which they try to understand the embracing on AR in the manufacturing side. And this is the, on the industrial side of uh, of, of the IoT, uh, but this, you know, this was the, the the scenario we were moving on. Very exciting, a lot of uh, you know from any angle you wanted to see. Uh, organization invested in this. You see the uh, Horizon 2020 uh, EU program a lot on this uh, topic of convergence, investment in the states. Um, the acquisition of companies, the creation of the IoT slash AI platform, the discussion on edge computing. So it was a, was a lot of excitement. Now, we went instead uh, into the COVID. Yeah? Therefore, we went towards um, a completely different situation. I mean, I'm, I'm not staying here to discuss the COVID in, in, in the sense of, uh, of our experience. Every one uh, of us has his own experience on COVID, his own, or her own experience, and uh, no need for me to say. But you know, the structure of our experience was about the WHO recommendation, well, identify, isolate, and quarantine, uh, based on uh, you know, an experience of, uh, uh, of pandemic, which is not new. Uh, you see down on the uh, on the slides, um, you know, in the in the last uh, the, from in this century, we had experienced as humanity quite few quite few events like that. Not at, at the size of COVID, but we had experience on that. Um, how do we react it to this in terms of approaches? And there are. Quite a few, there is quite interesting literature that came out around May, uh, June, July 2020 in assessing these. And most of this literature was looking at the use of digital technology for addressing the phase of lockdown and the, phase, uh, the first phase of the uh, COVID 19 history. Um, and in this approach, in this analysis, was quite evident how all the technologies we discussed it in the in the uh, previously within this uh, you know, uh, convergence of emerging technologies within the digital transformation strategy were kind of reused in a different way. And the main different difference was between uh, the Chinese approach and the European approach. And the Chinese approach, which was very techno-driven and extensive use of all a number of technologies versus if a, a, a European USA approach, which was more um, uh, tuned towards issues of privacy uh, and uh, uh, to a certain extent issues of freedom as we are seeing uh, happening these days. The effect of these uh, has been primarily of this approach has been uh, on uh, the rule of social distancing and therefore uh, the uh, various implications of this rule starting from smart working and here on smart working uh, you know the definition of smart working can be maybe it's not clear what, what a smart working is 
in a sense, some people believe that is me just having this call with you, or is from my home, or me using my laptop and working. The interpret a, a bit more advanced interpretation of smart working is also come came into the into the into the discussion. And in this interpretation, uh, quite a few interviewees that uh, I discussed with they saw the role of uh, immersive realities. Uh, and one element was, for example, remote maintenance. How, how can we uh, do uh, remote maintenance using um, AR, VR, uh, immersive reality technologies? Um, and, and there was quite a few, and again, it was strongly manufacturing oriented, obviously, because is there that we want to uh, control machines, but an interviewee also talked about controlling uh, facilities uh, in a remote way, enhancing, you know, using the, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the real, immersive reality technologies. The other Im impact was on, um, on how we, we kind of live, ex um, we kind of adjust our life in a remote way. Uh, for example, my personal experience, I had a lot of teaching to do. The teaching was doing remotely. And uh, uh, one interesting thing at the beginning of this call, I asked you, why don't you show your face? Because my students never show my face. And you know, the interaction at uh, educational level without seeing each other, at least for me, uh, is, um, is, is not that easy, it's not that enjoyable. Um, but we, you start to see some kind of tools, avatar base, if you want, I don't know how you call it uh, uh, properly, um, in which you could um, um, create maybe a different environments in classes. Uh, and I saw, uh, I, I did not use it, but I, I was, um, in our university, we had a, a sort of test from the computer science department on use uh, VR uh, headsets for uh, running classes with, uh, with the students. It was a, a, a test, I think, of uh, a lecture with uh, seven students uh, 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 doing, uh, doing that. So you kind of see um, the evolution also, also of uh, the online training uh, uh, using maybe the next step using this sort of, of, of technologies. Um, there was also in my, interview, in my interviews, uh, you know, a discussion about, okay, we have uh, issues about elderly people, particularly in Europe with an elderly population. Is there space there again for, for immersive realities in remote diagnostic, remote in care? Um, there is a, a European, organization called Assisted Living, which they are trying to explore that, uh, uh, but I didn't really see a, a strong examples and I'm happy uh, if, um, to, you know, to, to, to have your view on this, if you, if you have experience or if you know of application in that, in that regard. Then we go to the second phase. You go to the second phase and we realize a couple of things. Um, that smart working was actually working between brackets, even if there are all a number of uh, challenges to face in terms of uh, um, divides. Yeah, um, for example, in the case of Italy, uh, one thing that was evident was that part of the business system was ready to embrace uh, smart working solution, even in advanced way, as I, I, as I discussed, some others were completely out of the game. Um, but the idea was that we could empower smart working forms uh, for particularly from uh, remotely uh, routinized uh, activities. Um, and I'm talking about remote monitoring of, uh, of machine and assets and um, obviously create a new way of human machine interactions. And in these, obviously, uh, I personally see um, a lot of, uh, I personally see a role from immersive reality technologies in doing this. Uh, there is then the sides of uh, 
smart working recreates also uh, spaces and organizations. Uh, and this is not new in the literature. You can see here on the um, on these uh, on these slides that the work on so-called uh, telecommuting goes back to the 1975. This idea to create satellite offices near your house, which you can go. Uh, maybe today we could have some sort of virtual satellite offices if you want. Uh, and uh, in this virtualization of the organization, again, uh, AR, AR creates virtual realities, or creates uh, new realities for us. Now, uh, so in a nutshell, uh, when then we ask uh, where, uh, where AR, VR uh, can play a role in, uh, in the recovery after COVID, in convergence with other technologies, I think three main areas came uh, to, uh, to our attention. One was Industry 4.0, and I think I've discussed it, uh, particularly the use of uh, those technologies for remote controlling of machines came quite frequently into the conversation uh, I had. Uh, this conversation with, uh, with, was uh, where with um, uh, experts say, uh, in, the, in the various areas, but also with uh, um, CEOs and board members of uh, um, IoT companies, but also adopters of technologies, uh, um, in particular this type of technology we're talking about. The other area was tourism, uh, in which I have to say in tourism, there is a lot of um, exciting ideas using VR, and probably you know uh, all these virtual trips uh, that you can have uh, made by filmmakers uh, using uh, VR technologies, um, but also um, you know, immersive experience in the you know, archaeological site of Pompeii or, 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 or other museums. Uh, my impression, anyway, was that still we do not really understand the business model of it. Uh, we, are, we are not that, uh, or maybe we have not reflected uh, deeply on how, on how to do it. It's just a, a, a marketing uh, tool. Uh, can, can, we, can we do something different? And I have to say, this is a big discussion in tourism because, uh, as you can imagine, the tourism sector is paying a, a, a huge price with this, uh, with this COVID crisis. And then again, the other area uh, was the, 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 let's say, the, the uh, elderly assistant, the so-called ambient and assisted living application, in which quite a few, as I said, uh, interviewees um, discuss the, uh, the potential role of ARVR. But I, again, I, saw, I see the idea, I don't see the applicability of it. Uh, goes that you know, the healthcare caring section, uh, se sector is, a, um, is not an easy one uh, to, uh, to penetrate from a technological point of view because there is all uh, a number of regulation or a number of uh, um, uh, cultural issue to overcome. But these were the three areas in which basically they say we can work around this to, uh, uh, to, to move on. And move on means moving the innovation machine, moving the uh, uh, the economy and so on. Now, um, where are the possibilities for doing that? And uh, here I'm talking from uh, uh, um, an European point of view, an EU point of view primarily. As you, some of you know, um, um, uh, the European Union has launched the Recovery and Resilience Facility which is a, a huge program, including all a number of activities. And uh, uh, in this, um, ob the main objectives are on one side, the green economy, uh, on the other side, on the other side, the skills, uh, the formation of skills with an underlying layer of the use of digital technology. 
there is, I think, an estimation of 150 billion euro invested on digital tech. And um, this is, a, a, in my opinion, is an incredible opportunity to catch uh, because uh, there will be investment a potential to, uh, to work on ideas uh, in which the technologies are coming together, include, including the AR, VR. And uh, I think uh, my positive attitude is more or less shared by this survey, which was run during September, uh, again, between Italy and, uh, and the UK, uh, uh, talking at CEO's level in the, in the, in, in, in the technology community on how to perceive this. Um, and uh, you see the positive perception of that. But, and I think here is my uh, message, uh, my, my desire of engaging uh, with, uh, with you and uh, why I accepted the invitation from Jean-Philippe on talking about this. Because as I said, as you can see from my presentation, I'm not an ARVR expert. I, I look at ARVR for another app. When I'm asking, uh, which are the technologies that can impact the most the IoT? You know, the response for me is not a surprise when I look at the high 5G, but is a surprise when I look at RBR. You know, 5% of these 130 people tell me that there is a role for ARVR in convergence with the IoT. Uh, and okay. You can say, all right, this is 130 people. Yeah, despite their CEO, maybe the, you know, the Italians do not like ARVR, is their problem. Instead, when you go and see uh, at, um, uh, this is a work done by uh, um, the area of the European Commission who looks at the use of digital technologies in industrial, is uh, advanced uh, uh, industrial technologies. You see the link down on top. Again, and you have these slides. You can, uh, this is a snapshot from the last report they've produced. And you look at, uh, in these charts, and uh, of the technology uptake on the x-axis and the technology generation on the y-axis. And you see where AR, VR is. Now, um, for, this is, for me, a, a worthy part of this AR, VR. Because I, I can see uh, in, in, in the last four or five years, I've seen and experienced somehow the, uh, the uh, potential use of these technologies in uh, IoT implementation and in digital transformation, but the perception of it is very low. And, and therefore, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, 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 to have your view on this, but this is a bit worrying. Uh, and uh, um, also, you know, kind of makes me think that there is a, still that perception of AR VR technology as an entertainment field, which is a completely wrong perception, in my opinion. Um, so my conclusion really is um, that in this study that is not is not finished yet because we are basically. Uh, trying to understand in a longitudinal way also how uh, the digital transformation strategy and, and paradigm is changing along these different phases of COVID. But some of the, uh, of the conclusions that I want to share for, with, the, with this community is really uh, there is a minimal, of, let me phrase it better, there is a, a, a small part of IoT players, yeah, I'm talking about IoT companies uh, that understand that they are working on AR, VR uh, in their solutions in convergence with their IoT applications and maybe within the middle of the AI. Uh, there is a large part who does not really see it. On the adopter side, there is a, a, a niche of players who works on it, there is a big uh, part of other players who either have a wrong view on AR, VR, or they believe that is something on which they cannot invest because they do not see the benefits, because they just see the cost, 
and uh, when I'm talking about cost in a, in a worldwide sense, it's just, just financial cost, but also the cost of skilling the people and so on. Uh, and uh, in finally, into the uh, use of ARVR for workers, particularly in Europe, there is an enormous worry about the labor uh, law implication. So um, I want to conclude with, first of all, please tell me I'm wrong, yeah? Because I hope I'm wrong, otherwise my, my picture is, is not that great. Or tell me where I'm wrong uh, and you know, sh share your view with me on, 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 on what I'm saying. And um, you know, I really invite this community to, to open it up, if you will, to the, to the rest of the technological community. Sometimes they do not talk to each other, sometimes quite, quite often. Um, and maybe to reshape a sort of new, uh, new strategy towards the external world. Maybe kind of deconstructing also between brackets fake, fake news, if you want, on ARVR or fake information or wrong information on, on ARVR. Um, and I think I'm done. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to talk with you. <laughs>